Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Nick Cosgrove and I'm back with this week's No Filter Q&A. This is the episode where I answer all questions related to diet, training, and supplementation that I received over the last seven days from our in-house clients, online clients, as well as a few of our online followers. Remember, if you have any questions related to your nutritional plan, workout program, supplements you are currently taking, not taking, considering taking, please feel free to email me those questions at nick at foreverfitperformance.com or you can DM me your questions on my Instagram at fitcosgrove underscore. All right, let's get started with this week's no filter Q&A with question number one. Nick, how would you recommend pushing through the days you don't want to go to the gym? Uh, good question, common question and common problem for a lot of people, right? I mean, a lot of people struggle just to get to the gym. I always tell my clients, look, 50% of the battle is just getting yourself to the gym. Once you're at the gym, you're 50% the way there, right? I always, uh, I'm a firm believer, I've always said this, that working out is 90% mental. So if you can get yourself there mentally, you'll get the rest of the way physically. So how do you do that? Uh, my recommendation is one, hire a personal trainer, okay? If you're having difficulty getting yourself to the gym, hire someone that will hold you accountable to get to the gym. Okay. If you're paying for a session, you're not going to miss that session, right? So regardless of how shitty you might feel or how tired you might feel or how stressed you might feel, you've made an appointment, you've paid for that appointment, you're not going to miss that appointment. So that's a big reason why a lot of people hire personal trainers is just for that accountability, right? I've talked about this in the past, how I've had clients working with me for the past 20 plus years. They know what they're doing in the gym. At this point, I would hope they know what they're doing in the gym. But the reason they still work with me is for that accountability, okay? So because they know I'm waiting for them for that session and they've already paid for that session. And unless they give me 24 hours cancellation, they're going to have to pay for that session. So the, that right there, three major incentives to get their asses to the gym, okay? So that's one thing. You could hire a personal trainer. You could join a small group fitness class, uh, just something to hold you accountable. Another thing I'd recommend is that you prepare ahead of time. So what I mean by that is if you're someone who works out at seven o'clock in the morning, you want to make sure that you have your gym clothes laid out for that workout, right? So when you wake up out of bed, your gym clothes are set. Maybe you had them on your kitchen counter when you're prepping your meal in the morning, your breakfast, and you can dress in your gym clothes right away, right? You're not looking through the closet in the dark. Where's my shorts? Where's my t-shirts? Where are my sweatpants, my hoodie, whatever. You have everything laid out, ready to go. On top of that, if you're going to work right afterwards, you have your work clothes laid out. So everything's packed, ready to go in a bag, right? Um, same thing with your nutrition. I eat oatmeal every morning for breakfast. My oatmeal is in a microwave when I'm asleep. As soon as I wake up, I set the microwave for two minutes. It's ready. Okay, so I don't have to go and cook my oatmeal. It's already ready to go. So that really helps me stay on track with my meals. I have everything prepared ahead of time. And same with my workouts. Everything's already set. I have my workout clothes packed for the next day. Finally, my next recommendation would be to actually premeditate what you're going to do in the gym. Okay, so if you're not working out with a trainer, okay, I'm going to go to the gym today. Today is my back workout. So I'm going to be doing lap pull downs. I'm going to be doing cedar rows and make a goal for yourself. Say, you know, last week I did hundred pounds in the lap pull down. This week, I'm going to try to get 115 pounds. Or last week I was able to get 12 reps. This week, I'm going to try to get 15 reps. Make a goal in your workout. You don't need to make multiple goals. Make one specific goal and say, okay, I want to get, you know, a new PR, a personal record in the squat rack, whatever that is. So you're thinking about that as you go to the gym, right? It's almost like you're, you're mentally preparing yourself for war, right? Or the workout in this case. So that's my recommendation is if you can afford it, hire a personal trainer, um, prepare yourself ahead of time. Okay. So what I mean by that, again, have your workout clothes set up in the morning, you're packed, ready to go with your workout clothes, your work clothes, everything's all packed, prepare your meals ahead of time too. So everything's all portioned out and then premeditate how your workout's going to go. Okay. Um, but that's what I recommend because honestly, that is probably the biggest problem a lot of people face and why a lot of people just, they give up the gym because they have a hard time getting to the gym. They feel overwhelmed. They think, oh my God, I got to get, you know, I got to drive to the gym. I got to find parking. It's going to take me 20 minutes to walk to the gym and 20 minutes back. And I got to shower and all these things. And they get overwhelmed and just take it step by step and think, okay, cut out all the bullshit. If you have your meals prepared, if you have your clothes set up, if you have a plan in your head of what you're going to do when you get to the gym, or if you have a trainer that you've hired that will hold you accountable, you're halfway there. Okay. So that's my recommendation for those people that struggle getting to the gym. All right. Next question. Nick, when do you work out? <laughs> you know, honestly, I work out whenever I receive a cancellation. 
Uh, and that's the truth. Um, my schedule for those people that work with me in house is booked solid from usually 6 a.m. to about 3 p.m. during the day. And of course, I do have my after hours on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, my schedule is pretty jam packed, though. So, what I do is I actually work out whenever I receive a cancellation. And I do receive at least one cancellation a day, unfortunately. But sometimes, fortunately for me, because I can squeeze in a workout. But honestly, that's when I work out. So same thing is I'm prepared, ready to go. I have my pre-workout shake ready to go. I have my pre-workout meal or my post-workout meal both together. And so if I receive a cancellation, let's say it's an hour before the time slot, I'm ready to go. So that's when I work out. And it works really well for me because obviously I work in a gym. So I'm right there. I don't have to travel very far. Um, but I don't have a scheduled workout time or day. And that's simply because I just, with my schedule, I can't do that. And that's fine. I've learned to accommodate that over the years. And sometimes I'm working out at seven in the morning. Sometimes I'm working out at seven at night, but it works for me. I always try to get my clients to work out a consistent time and day because I find that works well for the body and for most people. But again, that really comes down to the individual. Okay. Again, for me though, it's just whenever I receive a cancellation, that's when I work out. Okay. Uh, Nick, what do you think about Kodak pancakes? Yeah, I received this question on my Instagram last week from a client that works with me in house. Um, and so I wasn't familiar with Kodak pancakes. So I Googled them, looked at the nutritional content. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not a big fan of them. Um, first of all, such a small serving, right? We're talking like two small pancakes, 29 grams of carbs, eight grams of sugar. Uh, that to me is too much. So it's something that I wouldn't recommend. It's something that I wouldn't put on a nutritional plan simply for the reason that it's too much sugar, too much carbs for such a small portion. Nobody's going to have two. And when I say small, I mean like small pancakes. Somebody's going to eat two small pancakes. So whenever you're reading a nutritional label, it's important to realize that a few things. You want to make sure that just because something is, let's say, low in sugar or low in carbs or low in fat, look at the portion size. Because if the portion size is really small, like minuscule, chances are you're probably going to triple or quadruple that portion size. So if something's eight grams of sugar for two small pancakes, well, you're probably going to have four to six of those small pancakes. So now you're looking at 16 to 24 grams of sugar. Okay. So that's why it's very important to understand nutritional labels when you're reading them um, and not just look at the fats, the carbs, and the sugar, but also look at the portion size, the serving size, because that's very important because most people don't actually stick to the serving size. They usually double it, triple it, or sometimes quadruple it. Okay. So factor that in when you're figuring out, okay, can I fit this into my macronutrients? Um, in the case of those pancakes, I wouldn't recommend them. Okay. I know they're sold as a health food, but in my opinion, there's nothing healthy about that. Uh, if you want to stay to that portion size, by all means do it, but I have a feeling you're going to be hungry very quickly afterwards. So my preferred choice for breakfast, most people know something like oatmeal, cream of rice, Ezekiel bread. Those are all great complex carbohydrates, no sugar, high in fiber. They're going to stabilize your blood sugar levels, regulate your insulin levels. So it's a good way to start the morning. So you're not hungry two or three hours later, right? It'll keep you feeling fuller for a longer period of time. All right, next question. Uh, Nick, is it okay to bank my calories during the week so that I can eat more on the weekends? Another question that came to me through my Instagram, I'm getting a lot of questions on my Instagram, which I really appreciate that a lot of feedback people are giving me online uh, through my IG account. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, fitcosgrove underscore, I throw stories up every day, um, always answering questions that people send to me, sometimes not even on the Q&A. Um, so any questions you have, you know, if it's a quick question with regards to your workout or your nutritional plan, supplement protocol, feel free to send that to me and I'll put it up for to share with others, okay, in my Instagram stories. So when it comes to banking your calories to save for the weekends, I wouldn't advise that, okay? And I answered this question briefly on my Instagram uh, earlier this week. That's like, and what I said was that would be like taking $1,000 and putting it into a savings account rather than investing it. You're going to lose money to inflation. Why would you do that, right? It doesn't make sense. So it's the same thing. Why would you throw away good calories and save them so that you could be a glutton on uh, weekends and eat, just eat more. Okay. You need to utilize your calories in an efficient manner. So if you're doing a workout on Monday, but you're cutting your calories in half because you want to save them for eating whatever the hell you want on the weekends, well, your workout's going to suffer and the gains that you're going to make in the gym are going to suffer because when you work out, 
you need to eat. You need to give your vit your body vitamins, nutrients, minerals, all that good stuff. So if you're depriving yourself of essential calories that your body needs to grow, you're not going to see results. And in some cases, if you're even trying to lose weight, if you cut your calories too low, your results are going to become stagnant because your metabolism will slow down. So it's a mistake to just cut calories in one day just so you can eat more on another day. The body doesn't work like that. In fact, the body really likes to have regular routine. That's what the body responds well to. So my recommendation for people following a nutritional plan, try to keep it basic, try to keep your calories constant, try to keep your macronutrients consistent from a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so when I work with someone on a nutritional plan, I'll usually give them, depending on the individual I'm working with, anywhere from four to eight meals on their plan. Uh, sometimes these are larger meals. Sometimes these are smaller meals. This will depend on the gender, the lifestyle, the person's level of fitness, what their goal is, whether they lose weight, gain weight, whatever it is. But I make sure that structured plan is implemented on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's not like, oh, Monday, let's do eight meals. And Tuesday, let's do two meals. It's like, no, no, Monday, let's do eight meals. Tuesday, we're going to do eight meals and so on and so on at eight meals. So the body knows what to expect, okay? That's very important when it comes to designing a nutritional plan because, again, you don't want to have fluctuating energy levels throughout the day, okay? And this is whenever I have people tell me, oh, I'm tired or I have no energy or I'm constantly hungry, I'm irritable. First thing I say to them, I'm like, what did you eat? And usually they've had something that was very high in sugar a few hours earlier. So they're crashing or they haven't eaten yet. So their insulin levels are going down. So it really affects their, their moods and it affects their energy. So you want to make sure that you implement a solid nutritional plan. So stick to a structured plan that you can follow on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. That's essential. So I would not advise anyone to bank their calories just so that they can consume more calories on a certain day. Okay, the body does not work like that, especially if you're trying to build muscle and lose fat. I promise you that's not a good way to go. Okay, I've always said it's easy to lose weight. Anyone can lose weight, but it's difficult to lose fat while building muscle. That's a whole different strategy that you have to implement into your day to day routine. Okay, so believe me when I tell you this strategy does not work by reducing your calories one day, increasing them the next and so on like that. That's to me is just going to create metabolic massacre. You're going to screw up your metabolism. Don't do it. Not a good idea. All right. Next question. Nick, I don't think I had the genetics to put on muscle. I've been working out for six months and look the exact same. I also have a hard time losing fat. I know you only recommend taking steroids for bodybuilders, but would it be okay to take just a little bit if you have crappy genetics? You know, I received a similar question to this a few weeks ago. And what I said was, don't become a slave to your genetics, okay? We're all built differently, right? Some of us have better genetics than others, right? I mean, you look at professional athletes. Yes, a lot of that's hard work, but a lot of that is just raw talent. Oh, I've got a cat here who's trying to jump on my lap. Cameo appearance by Cash. Cash. There, Cash says, hi, you jumped on my lap. You're distracting me right now. You're going to have to go back down, okay? Back down. Say goodbye to everybody. Okay. Bye. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to your genetics, my recommendation, you have to work with your genetics, not against your genetics. Okay. So I have a lot of people in the gym that just tell me, you know, I, I can't lose fat no matter what I do. I say, send me what you're doing on your diet. And I look at their diet, loaded with sugar, loaded with carbs, find the problem right there. I have other people that say, I can't build muscle. I say, let me see what you're doing in the gym. Send me your training program. And they're doing like 15 sets in an hour and a half workout. I'm like, you're not training hard enough. Okay. So you have to really honestly reflect on what you're doing in the gym and what you're doing in the kitchen before you start saying, I have crappy genetics. Okay. Cause I can tell you when I first started working out, I didn't do anything to my diet. My diet was terrible. I used to have like frosted flakes, fruit loops. I've talked about this in the past. I didn't know anything about dietary nutrition, but I trained and I got decent results, not great results, decent results. Is that what you're going to say? All right. He's still making his cameo appearance today. Okay. So it's not about, oh, 
I can't do anything because I got shitty genetics. You've got to figure out how to work with your genetics. So if you're someone who puts on fat really easily, okay, those are your genetics. You're called what we call an endomorph. You're someone who puts on fat very easily, but you also put on muscle very easily, right? Whereas someone who loses fat very easily typically tends to lose muscle very easily too if they go into a catabolic state. So they are what we call an ectomorph, right? So once you figure out what type of body type you are, that's how you can implement a good training program along with a solid nutritional plan. Okay. So if you dial in your diet, you dial in your training program, you put the two together, you will see results as a natural. I don't care who you are, because I've worked with people for 20 years, people of all shapes and sizes, different ages. And I've seen results with every single one of them, as long as they follow the plan that I lay out for them, because it's about customizing the plan specifically for you, not following some generic cookie cutter plan that you follow, find on YouTube, or you find on uh, Instagram reels, something that's customized specifically for you. So this comes down to working with your genetics. I can give two people a chest workout, but based on their structure, based on their size, it might be two completely different chest workouts. So one person I might give incline barbell, the other person I'll give incline dumbbell because one person has a mobility issue, the other person has a flexibility issue. So it really depends on the person I'm working with. So I don't believe that just because you have crappy genetics, as you say, you should just start jump on steroids. I also want to say that I don't recommend that just because someone competes in bodybuilding, they take steroids. At the professional level, yeah, you have to take steroids. That's a fact. There's nobody on that Mr. Olympia stage that's not taking steroids. Okay. And we, we know that. Um, the nice thing about that sport is at least they're honest about it. Unlike other sports where they lie and they, they don't, they, they cheat and they don't tell anyone. You know, you look at baseball, the scandals in baseball, the scandals in Tour de France, at least in bodybuilding, the guys are open and honest and say, yeah, I use steroids. Um, but I wouldn't recommend going down that route until you've truly tapped out your natural born genetics. And for me to really understand what you've been doing, six months worth of training, is that how long you've been training your entire life? Because I tell you right now, you need to put in a lot more than six months. Okay. Like. You got to put in years in and out consistently day in day out with your training program, with your nutritional plan, with your supplement protocol. You can't just go for six months and think you're going to look like Mr. Olympia. That's not going to happen. Okay. Um, some people will respond faster than others, right? There are people who we call fast responders. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a perfect example of that. Even if you were to take the steroids away, Arnold Schwarzenegger had superior genetics. So he would still be what we call the genetic elite. Okay. You look at someone like even a Michael Jordan, when you talk about performance, there's talent, there's hard work, but there's what we call natural born talent that some people just have. They're born with it. It's their genetics. But rather than say, oh, I'll never amount to anything, work with what you've got. Okay. Um, when I used to bodybuild, I always had a wide torso. I was never one of those guys that had a really, really small waist. So I had to work with what I got. So my goal was to make my lats bigger. So but the illusion was that I had a smaller torso because if my lats were bigger, my torso would look smaller. And it worked. Okay. So I worked with what I was given. Okay. And that's my recommendation. I would not advise anyone to go on an anabolic steroid cycle. Um, again, you're an adult, you can make that choice, but just remember there's health ramifications that can come along with anabolic steroids and everyone's going to respond differently to steroids, right? You're not just going to want just because your buddy at the gym responded fine to us one cycle doesn't mean you will. There's uh, guys that take steroids that they go bald, they get acne, um, they have testosterone issues. So you never know how your body's going to respond. So to me, unless you are competing at the professional level, I don't see a place for steroids when it comes to lifting weights personally. That's my own personal opinion though. Okay. Um, again, that's your choice to make, but I would look at everything that you're doing, really analyze what you're doing. And if you're not sure if you're, if you're, you're like, you know what? I don't know. Maybe I am making some mistakes. Hire a professional. You know, you just hire a trainer just to look at your program, look at your diet and say, okay, I think you can make changes here, here, and here. Because sometimes it does help, actually not sometimes, all the times, all the times it helps to have a professionally trained, knowledgeable, experienced coach in your corner that can tell you, okay, you need to make changes here. Troubleshoot. You need to take this out. You need to put this in. You need to rotate these macros here. And that will help you propel to the next level. Okay. So that's my recommendation is if you've been doing the same thing for six months, hire a professional that can help you and take you to that next level. All right. Next question. Uh, Nick, how do the parents that you work with find time to work out between taking my kids to school and after school activities, along with weekend sports, I rarely get a chance to go to the gym. Ah, okay. 
So <laughs> good question. Um, you know, a lot of the parents I work with, uh, they split the duties. Okay. So if I train like a husband and wife, when the husband's with me in the gym, the wife is taking care of the kid. When the wife's with me in the gym, the husband's taking care of the kid. I have other um, clients who will have like a nanny, right? Have someone that will take care of the kid or take the kid to school. Uh, if there's multiple kids, take the kids to their after school activities, just so they can find time to squeeze in that workouts. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, I can't afford a nanny. I can't afford a sitter. Well, here's the thing. You find ways to do it, right? Because if your health and your fitness is important to you and you want to set a good example for your kids, you, you will find a way. Okay. There's always time. There's 24 hours in a day. So I always tell people, you know, I don't understand why some people have kids that they feel like they don't have time to just give a little bit of time to work towards their own health and fitness, because you are setting a good example for your kids. Uh, I'll be honest. I really don't respect parents that neglect their own health and say, well, I have got kids. I'm like, yeah, but you chose to have those kids. So by choosing to have those kids, I imagine that you said, well, okay, financially, I can afford to hire a sitter or a nanny that can come in for three hours, like three or four times a week and look after the kids while I'm at the gym, right? Or I'm taking care of errands. Or I assume that you and your partner talked about how you'd split the duties once the kids were born. So it's all about planning, right? But listen, I've got tons of parents on my roster, some that don't have nannies, and they make it work. Okay, so I always think, you know, if it were me, I'd split the duties with my partner, I'll be honest, if it was me, I'd probably hire a nanny, a sitter, um, but I would split the duties of my partner as well, because my health and my fitness, that's a non-negotiable. I'm not going to stop going to the gym just because I've had a kid. Okay. That's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> now for me, I don't have kids. Got the cats, the other ones around somewhere, but not kids. So it, yeah, that's a non-negotiable and you got to turn it into a non-negotiable. So you have to either find it through financially affording to, you know, hire someone to look after the kids while you're at the gym or splitting the duties of your partner, but it can be done. Okay. And I truly believe that you're setting a negative example for your kids by not showing them that you can manage to have a career, look after a family and still find time to take care of your health and fitness. And if you're not setting that example now, you know, kids, implement, implement, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> kids in, in, intimidate or imitate. <laughs> I can't even say it. Damn it. Um, kids emulate. That's the word I'm looking for. Sorry. It's been a super long day today. I've been in the gym since 5 a.m. And I'm now doing this Q&A at 9 p.m. at night. Um, but yeah, they, they emulate what you do, right? So my recommendation, get your ass in the gym. Find a way. No excuses. Okay. Word I was looking for was emulate. <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, um, Nick, is steak considered a good source of protein? I want to get bigger, but don't want to gain fat. Also, is right, white rice okay to eat? I hate the taste of brown rice. I would not consider steak to be a good source of fat. Um, it's an okay source of fat, but you're much better off going with something like salmon, trout, uh, ground turkey. Uh, that to me is more of a healthier fat option than red meat. Um, if you are going to consume red meat, my recommendation is to consume something like a flank steak. Another thing too, you have to remember, most people have a really hard time digesting red meat. Okay. So if you are going to consume red meat, my recommendation is to keep it to no more than twice a week. Okay. Um, but honestly, it's not something I would consume on a regular basis. Okay. Um, it, it's just, it's, Again, there's a lot of issues that uh, are associated with red meat. There's a lot of uh, studies that show that too much red meat can lead to colon cancer, right? Puts a lot of stress on the digestive tract and create polyps in your colon. So you really want to limit your red meat intake, okay? Uh, for me personally, I don't consume any red meat. I haven't consumed red meat in years. So I, it's not something that I would consider as a healthy fat. Um, and as far as white rice, you know, I, I get flagged on this all the time. Um, but I still hold my ground on this. Uh, I'm a big fan of brown rice simply for the fiber content. Okay. Um, I do feel that when I consume brown rice, um, I feel fuller for a longer period of time. Most of my clients, I think all my clients that I have on their nutritional plans, they much prefer brown rice too, for those reasons. But if you truly cannot stomach brown rice, then my recommendation is to go for either sweet potatoes, yams, or quinoa. Okay. The reason I don't like white rice, and I know I'll get flagged on this again, is because I'm not sitting here saying that white rice is unhealthy. I've actually never said that. 
my whole argument of white rice is once you've had it, what white rice will do, it'll, it'll uh, raise your blood sugar levels, right? And we know this. So once it elevates your blood sugar levels, guess what happens? Your blood sugar levels crash very quickly. So by having that white rice within an hour, hour and a half later, you're hungry again. But you're not really hungry. It's just because your blood sugar levels are starting to crash. Whereas brown rice, because of the fiber content, it doesn't do that. Okay. So, you know, I've had people message me and say, you're wrong, you're wrong about brown rice. Uh, white rice is great for you. I'm like, I'm not arguing about white rice. I'm not saying that it's bad for you. I've never said that. I've just said that it elevates blood sugar levels. And then your blood sugar levels drop. So if it spikes and drops, then all of a sudden... Your brain thinks you're hungry, but you're truly not hungry, but then you go for more food. So you overeat. That's why I don't recommend white rice. Okay. Um, but again, I, my recommendation for complex carbohydrates, I keep it very simple. Brown rice, quinoa, yams, sweet potato, cream of rice, oats, Ezekiel bread. That's pretty much it. Uh, you can get away with some of those whole wheat passes as well. Just be careful again, because now it comes back down to that portion size issue I talked about in the past. They might be great on a macronutrient level, but then you have to look at that portion size because the portion size can be very small when it comes to pasta serving. So pasta is not something I eat, but I'm not necessarily against it as long as you stay within your portion control. All right. Okay. Next question. Nick, what do you think about fasting for the first part of the day? I wake up around 8 a.m. and don't eat until around 2 p.m. Will this have any negative consequences on my gains in the gym? Okay, so it, it doesn't sound like you're truly doing an intermittent fast. But uh, for those that don't know, and I've talked about intermittent fasting in the past, I've written some blogs uh, on it back in the day when I was writing my blogs. Um, I actually find intermittent fasting to be a very healthy diet to follow. Uh, very healthy. Okay. Um, and there's tons of studies that back that too. The problem with intermittent fasting, when it comes to building muscle and losing fat, it's not an optimal diet to follow. Reason why when you're going for a long period of time without certain proteins in your body, your muscles go into what we call a catabolic state. So they almost start to eat themselves. Okay. So it's very hard to grow. So if you're trying to build muscle, intermittent fasting is not ideal. Okay. But there's numerous studies that suggest that intermittent fasting is excellent for people who are going through, say, cancer treatments. It can regulate blood sugar levels. It can regulate insulin levels. So from a health component, it's an excellent diet. But again, from an aesthetics component, if you're trying to build muscle and lose fat, it's not ideal. And that's why most trainers, nutritionists, dietitians will recommend smaller meals throughout the day just to help regulate those blood sugar and insulin levels, okay? And to keep you in a growing state, right? So you don't risk going into a catabolic state. So I wouldn't recommend doing a nutritional plan like that. Um, again, though, if you're finding like, hey, you know what, I'm actually building muscle on this plan, and I'm losing fat, and I feel great. I won't argue with you, right? I'll say, yeah, do it. You know, you get all your blood work done, and everything's coming back, everything looks good, do it. But statistically speaking, most people who follow an intermittent fasting type diet plan, they don't necessarily train with weights, or if they do, they train sporadically or they train fairly lightly. Uh, because let's face it, it's very hard to train in a fasted state. Now, I don't mean like, I know I have some clients that train with me at six or seven in the morning. They are in a fasted state, but they've also had dinner at like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night or something. So they've had food in their system within the last, you know, eight hours. So, but when you're going for like 12, 14, 16 hours without food, then you go to the gym and work out. That to me is a recipe for disaster because you're not going to be able to replenish glycogen storages uh, necessary to be able to push the weight and get through the entire workout. So your muscular endurance is going to suffer. So I wouldn't recommend doing any intermittent fasting if your goal is to build muscle and lose fat. But as I've said, and I've said this time and time again, I think intermittent fasting, my, my speech is really off tonight. <laughs> intermittent fasting is an excellent diet from a health component. Absolutely. All right. Uh, is that it? Oh, one more question. Thank God, because my my speech is off tonight. These 12 hour days are catching up with me. OK, uh, Nick, I always feel so tired. I even drink around eight to 10 cups of coffee every day, but I'm still tired. Are there any supplements that you can recommend I take to help boost my energy? It's really affecting my workouts in the gym and energy levels during the day. Uh, it sounds to me, if you're drinking that much coffee, that you may have overtaxed your central nervous system, 
okay? You fried out your receptors. You're taking too much stimulants. So the answer would not be to take more stimulants. The answer is actually to back off the stimulants, okay? You need to reset your receptors. This is actually a very common problem with people who down tons of coffee or drink double espressos and Americanos all day is that they've fried out their receptors because they're relying on so much stimulants just to get through the day. So then when it comes to your workouts, you have zero energy, right? Too much of something's not good, right? So the first thing I'd recommend you do is you don't need to take everything uh, off, but I would take that down. So if you're doing eight to 10 cups of coffee a day, I would take that down to like maybe four cups of coffee a day, which to me personally is still too much. Like you're talking to someone who I get too jittery off a hundred milligrams of caffeine. So I can't imagine consuming you know, 800 milligrams of caffeine, I'd be off the wall. Um, but what's happened is your receptors are just, they're fried. So you need to reset your receptors. Now, the thing is when you take out your caffeine from eight to, or, or eight to 10 cups a day, and you need to bring it down to say two to four cups a day, you're going to go through withdrawal. You're going to feel even more tired, right? So that's when I recommend you supplement with vitamin D. Okay. Vitamin D is one of those uh, supplements and you know, I shouldn't even call it a supplement because it's a vitamin, right? And it's a vitamin that I consider to be essential. I put it in every supplement protocol, where I put vitamins and minerals in my supplement protocols um, with every client I work with, okay? Some people I recommend 2,000 IU, some people I recommend 3,000 IU, okay? Again, it will depend on the size of the person, the person's activity level. Regardless though, vitamin D is in everyone's stack. And that to me, along with vitamin C and omega-3, those are essential vitamins to have in your program. Now, here's the thing with vitamin D, you need to take it daily, okay? Uh, and you need to build up your tolerance to it. You're not gonna notice it right away. It's not a stimulant. It's not like you're doing a double shot of espresso, like, whoo, I just took some vitamin D. It doesn't work like that. Take some time. But I always tell clients after about three to four weeks, you start to notice the effects of vitamin D. Now, I always take my vitamin D in the morning. I take 3000 IU. I take it with my oatmeal and that just gets my day going. Um, I'm not a big coffee drinker. I have one cup a day. That's it. Sometimes I forget, uh, but I don't rely on stimulants to keep me up. I don't rely on stimulants to get me going. Even my pre-workout shake, there's no stimulants in it. It's usually just a protein shake. So you shouldn't need to rely on stimulants. And if you someone, if you are someone who has relied heavily on stimulants for the past few years, as I said, your receptors are most likely fried. Your central nervous system is fried. You need to take that caffeine, preferably out, but it's very hard to do that. That's why I say cut it in half, S implement some vitamin D into your routine. And you know the first few weeks are gonna suck. They're gonna be really hard. But I promise you over time, you will notice a difference, okay? Um, but honestly, taking too much stimulants is not going to be the answer. So it sounds to me like you're already taking too much. So adding more in like a pre-workout mix, that's just going to cause further issues down the line. If you're someone who has like heart condition or if you have a uh, heart history in your family where people have heart issues, that could be very dangerous, right? Because too much stimulants, very hard on the heart. So even if you don't have a heart condition, I wouldn't recommend over using or abusing stimulants. So that's my recommendation. If you're feeling that chronic fatigue, it's most likely because your receptors are fried. I've seen this time and time again. Your adrenal glands are fried. Your central nervous system's fried. You need to refresh. You need to reset. Cut the caffeine in half. Throw in some vitamin D. Make sure you get enough sleep. Cut any caffeine that you are consuming. If you go to bed at 10 o'clock at night, your last cup of coffee, in my opinion, should be no more than 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, that's it. Um, your body needs time to get rid of that caffeine. Okay. And you have to make sure your sleep is good. Your quality of sleep is so important. Okay. Because if you're not sleeping, you're not going to recover and you're going to feel tired. Right. And then you're just repeating the cycle over and over again. Cut your stimulants in half, implement, uh, throw in the vitamin D. That should do it. All right. That's it for this week's no filter Q and A. And thank God, because my apologies, <laughs> my brain is off tonight. Um, I, like I said, I was up at 5 AM this morning. Uh, it's now nine, nine twenty. At night, I've been nonstop all day. The cats have been keeping me uh, very busy at home lately. So I can relate to some of you who do have kids, uh, but I'm still getting my workouts in, okay? That's important. Still get your workouts in. Anyway, this uh, work, this uh, no filter Q&A will be going up on Monday, September the 16th. As a reminder, if you have any questions related to your nutritional plan, supplement protocol, training program, please feel free to email me those questions at nick at foreverfitperformance.com or you can DM me your questions on my Instagram at fitcosgrove underscore. 
Thank you all for watching. Thank you for supporting my YouTube channel, my in-house coaching business, and my online coaching business. I will see you all next week. Bye for now.